Hello, uh, today's sections we wanted to introduce to you guys how to discover all fresh set for a high performance storage pool. And my name is Marco, Marco Juan, and uh, I'm the technical lead for the uh, software defined storage and OpenStack. And Hi everyone, uh, good morning. My name is Tushar Gohard. I, I'm a cloud software architect at Intel. Um, so uh, let me quickly go over the agenda real quick here. So uh, you know the, the emerging theme uh, for uh, for the so software defined storage with Ceph is all flash backends. Um, so we we are actually going to go through a quick journey of uh, you know our experiments with all flash Ceph, uh, some tuning outcomes from a, from a cluster that we set up, and some architecture discussion as to how how do you go about designing a Ceph node for best performance for all flash. Uh, on, this, on this slide, uh, I want to talk to you what uh, who we are and what we do. And you, know, you guys know about the QCT. QCT is the global data center providers. And uh, the Quanta, you, you guys may know already, is a hardware manufacturer company. And QCT is the, sole, the, the subsidiary of the Quanta. And uh, we also um, deliver a total solution, uh, the turnkey solution for the customer. And uh, as a technology partners, we work really closely with the Intel to deliver the, the software defined solution and the, the, uh, the, the platform optimizations. So before we talk about uh, today's topic, I, I just wanted to get a quick show of hands. You know, how many of you are familiar with Ceph or have worked with Ceph? That's awesome. And uh, have you, I mean, how many of you have played with all flash Ceph, like all SSD backends for Ceph? Okay, and, and one last question. How many of you are familiar with NVM Express as a, as a storage interface? Super, so this, this is gonna go, go smoothly today. So, um, you know, a lot of you may have seen, seen this slide. You know, the emerging theme is, is the media transition from your spinning hard drive based media to, uh, to all flash. You know, uh, as, as this slide points out, you know, uh, by 2020, we, we do see the, uh, the media costs, you know, the dollar per gigabyte for all, you know, the, the solid state media coming in parity with the, with the hard drive media. So that's why this, this becomes an important theme to discuss, you know, how does Ceph do today with all flash or all solid state storage and where, are, where do we go from here? So, so if you look at uh, the spectrum of use cases uh, for, for Ceph today, I mean, Ceph remains to be the, uh, the block storage of choice for, for most OpenStack deployments uh, with RBD. Uh, and in terms of the workloads, uh, this, is a, this is a chart that shows you the spectrum across the, uh, on the y-axis, the performance scale, and, and the x-axis, the capacity scale. Uh, as, as you can see, the, you know, your, your more capacity-oriented uh, use cases still, still tend to be on the more uh, generic hard drive uh, kind of media for, for dense capacity nodes. Whereas the, the non-volatile memory or the solid state focus is, is, is basically the other bubbles, which are mainly block workloads. So in this exercise that we did jointly with QCT, uh, we, we focused on databases as, as a workload. So that's what this, uh, uh, this slide set is going to walk you through. Okay. So on these slides, we uh, actually we built a, a cluster based on the uh, the, uh, the five nodes or NVMe safe cluster, and uh, you can see the spec is uh, with the uh, Intel uh, 2699 V4 and uh, 88 high core, the virtual core after hyper threading, and uh, with based on the RHEL 7.3, um, Red Hat Ceph's 2001 story, which is dual version, and uh, yeah, of course it's a Firestore base, it's not a blue store, and. Uh, uh, the, the, the very far left size, this we, uh, we pair with the 20 piece of the ter terabyte Intel P3520, um, 3D name technologies, and uh, the, so with the two times vacations, and the total, the full label capacity is 82%. So on the very far uh, right hand side, the bottom is we can do with the 10 clients, 
um, with the 100 RPD volumes. And so you can see that's the, uh, that's the architecture we designed in the QCT lab. So by the way, we have the 20 piece, we populate all the NVMe device into five of the five of the QCT D51BP servers. So that's the testing result we want to share with you. Um, is 4K random read. So on the, the left hand side of the blue linear, um, there's the uh, the default configurations. So we don't uh, that in that scenario we don't do any optimization on the self.conf and it neither on the uh, the operation system level OS level. So on the orange linears we do a lot of tuning on the self.conf and as well as on the, uh, the operating system like the kernel and the uh, the TCP window size all those kind of stuff. So you can see that's uh, the the big jump between the default value and uh, the the tuning the, the the tuning after the tuning you see the performance like double this double the performance yeah uh, before we go on to the next slide just uh, wanted to point out real quick so so the op the optimizations that uh, marco described uh, going from uh, going from the going from the default to the you know which is the blue blue line chart to the orange, which is the tune line chart, right? Uh, those involved the very well documented tunings on sev.com slash performance. So far, we, you know, together as Intel and QCD, we have contributed quite a few of those tunings uh, at the BIOS, OS, as well as Ceph level. So, 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 the, so this result was only with uh, software-based tunings, uh, only at the OS level. Uh, this is this actually another aspect that that comes into picture like when you when you go beyond the just the softer aspect right so when you when you look at a standard high volume server today uh, it's it's pretty much analogous to a dual socket uh, you know xeon class server right where um, you know instead of using a single memory pool you you have a concept of local and remote memory, uh, which, which is basically the, the non-uniform memory access where your latency goes up as, if you, as, as you go over uh, the, this bus called QPI bus uh, <coughs> over to the other socket, and that, that affects your performance, right? So, so basically, by, by simply uh, core pinning or socket pinning the Ceph OSDs has, to, has been the traditional way but what we're trying to say here is that, uh, you know, there, there is actually more to be had by paying attention to your node design uh, from a NUMA point of view. If you were able to uh, basically isolate your, your storage and networking, uh, affine to your Ceph OSDs on, on, on the same socket, you, you, you actually could get uh, quite a bit of performance benefit. And, and here is a proof point that we are, we're gonna show here. So, so th these are some some guidelines that are you know traditionally been been documented talked about at o several OpenStack summits, uh, but what we wanted to add was basically the the point number one, which is new balance network and storage devices across CPU sockets, right? And and what what this does for you. So so this this diagram quickly shows uh, you know a kind of a before before scenario where we we had all of the uh, in NVMe drives, as, as you can see, you know, to, to on CPU zero, which are marked by the <coughs> by these by in blue, and net all networking on the other socket, right? And when we go from this picture to a, a more well balanced picture, where where you have uh, NVMe's and and NICs evenly split across across the CPUs, where you know your OSDs don't have to cross the socket, right? To uh, to to do their I/O or networking, right? Uh, this is this is what you get. So, so again, the the orange line is basically the the s only software tuned line where we we only relied on OS, BIOS, and Ceph tunings. Uh, the the right line is basically where we we actually split the the storage and networking across sockets. As you can see, you know, you, we actually were able to get even at Q depth eight, we were able to get 40% better IOPS. And this is actually, you know, the latency uh, portion is what I wanted to uh, draw your focus on. The average latency was almost 100% better, uh, and yeah, and and there was a big imp improvement in the 99% latency as well. So, 
Okay, so um, that's the, the server we are using and, uh, to, for these architectures, and uh, on the right hand side, there's two NVMe devices we are uh, applied to these architectures. So we uh, oh, NVMe self enabled high performance workloads. If you are IO, uh, IOPS intensive, um, you better looking at the uh, the right servers with the right hard disk, uh, the, so you can have the, your maximum uh, performance on your clusters, and. So here we not only dedicate or for IAPS optimized solutions, we QCT only to do also deliver the throughput and the capacity optimized SKU for your reference. So, so if you are interested in about a solution QCT like to deliver, uh, please welcome to the booth at B5. And I'll be on the booth and to answer all the questions you guys have. <laughs>